Next, I will show how to apply the two means t known pool procedure to test a statistical claim about two population means when population standard deviations are unknown. Consider the following example. A group of economists wants to verify the claim that United States workers have the average annual live less than European Union workers. Two samples of United States and European Union workers were obtained independently and analyzed. The sample of 32 United States workers had the average annual leave of 20.4 days and the standard deviation 8.5 days. The sample of 38 European Union workers had the average annual leave of 24.9 days and the standard deviation 4.3 days. Test the claim at 1% significance level. First, let's note that the sample means are 20.4 days and 24.9 days. The sample standard deviations are 8.5 days and 4.3 days. And the sample sizes are 32 and 38 for United States and European Union workers respectively. Now let's identify the statistical claim that needs to be tested. The claim is that the United States workers annual leave is less than European Union workers. So we can symbolically express the claim as mu1 is less than mu2 or equivalently as mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero. Since the claim is about the population means and the population standard deviations are unknown, we will use the two means t procedure. But how do we choose whether it is pooled or non-pooled? We use t pooled procedure when the standard deviations can be assumed equal. Otherwise, we use t non-pooled procedure. To test whether the standard deviations are the same, we set up a two variances f test with alpha equal to 1%. For convenience, we chose the same alpha as in the problem, but in general, it doesn't have to match and depends on the context. The null hypothesis is that the variances are the same. The alternative hypothesis is that the variances are different. Then we use the formula to compute the test statistic f0, and it is equal to 3.908. Then we use technology to find the p value which is 0 0.001, and it is less than alpha, which is 1%. The conclusion is that we do have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we will believe that the variances are not the same and choose the non-pooled procedure. Before we begin the two means t non-pooled procedure, let's check if all necessary assumptions are satisfied. The samples must be assumed simple, random, and independent. If not, then the results of the test are invalid. The central limit theorem must be applicable. In other words, the populations are normal or the samples are greater than 30. Also, the population standard deviations are unknown and not assumed equal. To use the T non-pooled procedure, we must compute the degrees of freedom of the involved T distribution using the following formula. At the end, to make the answer an integer, we round down. We will use the following template to perform the hypothesis testing. In step 1, we will set up the hypothesis. In step 2, we will identify the significance level. In step 3, we will find the test statistic using the formula. In step 4, we will perform either the critical value approach or p-value approach to test the claim. In step 5, we will draw the conclusion. And finally, in step 6, we will interpret the results. Since our claim mu1 minus mu2 less than 0 is in the form of an inequality, we are going to set it up as an alternative hypothesis. Therefore, the null hypothesis, which is always in the form of an equation, must be mu1 minus mu2 equals 0. So the test is left tail. Step 1 is complete. The significance level can always be found in the statement of the problem. In our case, it is 1%. Step 2 is complete. The test statistic can be computed using the formula. In our case, the test statistic t0 is equal to negative 2.716. Step 3 is 
step 3 is complete. Next, we will test the hypothesis using two different approaches, the critical value and the p-value. In the critical value approach, we construct the rejection region. In this approach, we need to know the significance level alpha and the type of the test. We draw the rejection region under the T-curve with 44 degrees of freedom, according to the type of the test, so left tail test will have the rejection region in the left tail. The region must have the area equal to the significance level 1%, so the right boundary of the region is the critical value negative T0.01, which is equal to negative 2.4. One, four. So the entire region can be described as all the values to the left of negative 2.414. In p-value approach, we compute the p-value. In this approach, we need to know the test statistic and the type of the test. We find the p-value using the t-curve with 44 degrees of freedom, according to the type of the test. So, in the left tail test, the p-value is the area to the left of the test statistic, in this case to the left of negative 2.716. Symbolically, it can be expressed as the probability of t being less than negative 2.716, which is equal to 0 0.0047. Next, we are going to decide whether to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. In the critical value approach, we must check whether the test statistic is in the rejection region or not. Our test statistic is negative 2.716, and it is to the left of negative 2.414, thus it is in the rejection region. In the p-value approach, we must check whether the p-value is less than the significance level or not. Our p-value is 0 0.0047, and it is less than alpha. Both tests suggest that we do reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Next, we are going to interpret the results. Interpretation. Under 1% significance level, we do have sufficient evidence to suggest that the United States workers have less annual leave than European Union workers. I just showed how to apply the two means t non pooled procedure to test a statistical claim about two population means when the population standard deviations are unknown and assumed not equal.